Hi, I just wanted to make a quick video and um, talking about the equipment list. I will send a list um, a list down. But there's only so much you can write um, before it just becomes a whole load of confusion and a lot of money being spent. So I just wanted to talk about um, the things that you can get before we start the course. And what I've got here is loads. Um, firstly, it's found objects. So a bit of wire because we'll be you know, we use that to secure something. So, excuse the noise. Um, this is an unk my friend made. It used to be on a wrist guard. Oh my God. Okay, sorry. Um, but I'm gonna use it in one of my piece of work. Um, a perfume bottle. Now, sometimes I'll use assemblage, fine art pieces on my actual art work. And this is Mila Harris, but I may want to imbue it. Like, we will be talking about talismans, protections, and invocations when we do the course. So I may want to use this as part of my um, pieces that I want to create. A card, I found this, I think it's good. Bits of feather, I might want to add. Some eucalyptus leaf. And this, I think garlic was in this. But this is really good when you're printing. Um, now, one thing I will say is, is that I'm not a printer, print teacher. Um, I'm an artist that uses mixed media. Oh, this is from a bag. And for me, um, working with these different mediums for the work that we are actually going to do is really, really helpful. So this is not a print class, although we're using printing methods. Um, I just wanted to say this. So... I went to Mary Ward Centre to do, just to do a discovery day, and I did some printing. Um, and these are mono prints, some of them are mono, they're gel prints, I would say. Take this out of the way. And it was such fun, that's why I decided to incorporate it in the course. I wasn't going to, but it's such fun. So it's optional if you want to do the gel, get the gel print kit, but I recommend it. It's really, really pleasurable. So we use, this with gel print, this bit of feather here. Again, you can see the feather outline. Um, some other objects. This is a lino print that I put on the gel, um, gel plate. So, um, so it's really, really fun. Here is again, this is my Nagshampa paper, which I love, so I'm gonna incorporate that again. Um, so you may be asking, and look here, we've got a library, an old library um, stamp. Remember these stamps? So, oh, definitely. So it's kind of mixed media, kind of fun. Um, now this here is what I did here in the studio. And this texture was very similar to this kind of plastic thing. Um, I don't know, fruit holder. Um, this was a collage that I used and I kind of did a mono print on it as well um, and it was so effective that I that I said no I'm definitely going to do it so the gel print I'll show you in a minute um, again this is what I did in the studio look at that like no you know just without one of those press print press just use my hand and the gel print was really really easy to use it wasn't hard at all what i would say is get yourself a um they call it tampered glass where you can press your prints on um because it would really help you book so old book you can use the pages to print and this is what i want us to really focus on more i mean these are fun but they could just add textures to what we're doing already but it's really important that you use um, the work with old print. So this is this was before a jelly print, and this was a hawthorn, um, and this was fern, and it was just with ink pad and my roller. Again, the hawthorn on the ink with the book, which I think is so lovely. And this is a plant again, like pampas grass or something. It might be. I'm not too sure just a strand of it and so these are just prints that I've done 
without even using the, the jelly print. So again, loads of just really good quality paper. You can go to your art shop and get, um, you can actually just get an ink pad, a sketchbook. Um, and if you ask them at your, um, um, you know, the local art shop, that up for a sketch pad that works with all mediums because we're going to be using acrylic paint and ink. Again, this is an ink kit, watercolour inks. I think I got this from Great Art. Yeah, I'm sure I got it from Great Art. Um, and that, oh no, I didn't get it from Great Art, actually. I got it from those shops. You know like those shops that like, you get in the, in the centres where they're really cheap? So it was a re that's what I did those prints with. It was, um, I forgot what it's called. And they sell cards and prints and stuff. So again, this is just, I think this is just really heavy card. This is clay. I've just added on here texture. So I've shown you some of you this before. This is a twig. And on some of the works I've used, um, candle wax as well, just to kind of, you know, secure bits onto here. So this is the kind of thing we'll be doing. We'll be making, so you've got an option to make like a book. Okay, quite stiff, but I'll bind it together. And I will probably use um, wire to use to bind this. And um, I will show you how to do, um, like to bind some pages together, probably really badly. Um, but um, there's, a, there's a technique you can use to bind your page together. Um, if you don't want to, you can literally combine these as a pile. So layer, texture and um, pages on top of each other um, and create a book that way, which I've done in the past as well. Um, but this will be really nice if, you know, so it's like kind of documents of the journey, yeah? So these will be bound together. Um, so it will be an art book. Um, you don't have to create an art book, like I said. You can just create um, something in a box where it, you just want a representation. But what I want people to think about is, it's, it's a bit like a junk journal, but it's not a junk journal. It's kind of using different techniques, but we are, we are using it in an intentional way. So it's a sacred piece of art. And also, this is another thing that you can use is... This was an old, an old picture I'd done. I've taken these out because I'll probably use them as part of my, um, I don't know, I could use them and combine them with something. And, and layer, literally layer a page um, to do stuff. So it's very, what we do and how we do it is gonna be intentional in terms of the reason why we're doing it. So each thing that you do, each session, will start with a meditation and some reflective questions. So it'll be really intentional in what you're doing, but what you're making, there is there are no rules. There are no rule, rules, but if this was, I don't know, self-protection and balance, it's quite intentional, right? But this may not make sense to the average person. Another example could be to bring in sweetness and joy. I love like shampoo. In here, I might put some essential oils in here um, or some crushed rose petals in here, which may represent love to me. Or I could pair it in here with here and, and just create this as a, a sacred object and back this, um, you know, be, let me put it up a bit and use maybe card behind it. So it's, it's, a, it's a, um, a dedication um, and put it in a frame. So I'm going to show you something. I don't know if I've got my frames here. Okay. This is, this is the back of a canvas. So I could put this in here 
I could probably layer that and add this in here. Now, if my canvas was... Okay, let me try and do it this way because it might work better. Okay, put this to the side. Okay, there you go. I could actually make a piece of art. Yeah? So, this is just examples of what you can do with your objects um, and your artwork. Again, it could be something like this with a love letter to self with the rose petals. So we're going to get really quite intentional, quite deep, quite beautiful, quite experiential. It is just going to be fun. And, um, but obviously, I can't tell you what we're covering um, bit by bit. I can tell you the components of it. But the work presents itself because it's experiential. Also, these are, I've been cutting um, some pages of some prints of mine. And so I'm going to use this as well. So anything you can find, an old picture, I might cut one of my, this is one of my old paintings. Anything you can find, just gather your objects and, and then save it. So when we start in January, you have enough bits that you can save. Um, we're going to be using charcoal as well. Again, Cass Arts or any of the art shops, Hobbycraft. Hobbycraft is even getting cheaper than the art shop. What I will say is I do like the artist fix, fixative, acid-free, um, because it's really good for charcoal, pastel and pencil. And if you have, like me, I use some pastel sometimes in my art or pencil graphite, this really helps it fit, set. I don't use it a lot. You could use hairspray. Another thing I found in my pound shop is a math set. And it's really good for drawing triangles and circles. So it's got a little compass here. Um, and one of these. So these little things that you can just pick up will be quite fun. I'm not, because, you know, the gel printing stuff isn't cheap. Um, but most of your artists that are doing this course are creative, so you would know the price of these things. Um, but the gel printing, I'll show you the, the um, actual page of it. So this is a gel print. Let me see if I put well, up my gel printer um, so I can show you. Okay. There we go. So this is the one I bought. There was a smaller one, far too small. But this is the one I bought. I paid £16 for this. So gel printing stuff isn't cheap, right? Um, I paid £16 for this. I also had a roller um, from my printing already. Um, but they do a roller together for you to roll it on. Um, but yeah, I paid... That's the money I paid for this. Um, and it just peels off the back. Um, I've got to clean it a bit more because actually you need to make sure. Yeah, you just got to make sure that it's, it hasn't got so much stuff on it. I've got glitter, oh my God, how am I going to get it off? So I think I do, it's probably going to be glittery. Um, but yeah, this is the one to get. Um, there is, I've noticed in Jackson's Art and Bromley Arts that they've got a, an, an Etsy. They've actually got the kit. You're better off getting a kit because, to be honest with you, I mean, unless you can go to Hobby Craft and you know what size. I mean, this is the size of the one I did at Mary Walls. It's quite big. Um, but to me, I'm not working that big. I'm actually working this size. Um, at some point, I will probably be using a big one um, to, to do some bits when I do artwork. But... I don't really, I'm not really a printer, so there's other ways to get the textures, textures that I want, but um, it's, it's just fun, you know, so, but that's it, I'm going to send the equipment list alongside this, um, don't be surprised when you start this course that you start thinking about your artistic practice and more stuff that you can do. Um, and how you're going to be showing up as an artist. Don't be surprised that um, that comes up more, or even just in your day-to-day. -day, there's going to be 
so much that's going to come from this course. It's so rich. I'm so looking forward to it. So I do hope to see you. If you've got any questions, just email me um, or send me a message on Instagram because that would be much more quicker, I suppose. I can respond really quickly. Um, and if you know anybody's interested, make them sign up. Bye for now.